Welcome back, avid Starlighter fans. We've got our fifth game of the day coming up after a long break from that dominant performance of Not Today. Here we've got the Dream Destroyers versus Shadows of the Past. Should be another good one. And uh, we'll go ahead and hop right into it. I'm Zayori, joined once again remotely by Mr. Blaze. Blaze, good sir. How are you? Doing pretty good. I had some great games today, and we get to round it out with two more fantastic matchups here. Dream Destroyers and Shadows of the Past. Some uh, interesting teams with interesting play styles. That we have seen a little bit of shuffling from Dream Destroyers throughout the uh, group stage play of this tournament. Uh, seems that they're not going to be able to play with B-Kid and uh, their other member at this point in time. But Squeeze here, he's a really, really skilled player and shows some flexibility in his role set. And in December here, is going to be kind of playing as a stand-in, if I'm uh, calling that correctly. But yep. anyways, uh, beyond that, Shadows of the Past is the team to look to here to to make or break their Starlighter career. Right now, they are about to conclude their participation in Starlighter America's group stage. Right Ooh, now, they have the three grid. wins... Two losses and these two games to go. Two consecutive matches to decide their fate, to decide their standing, and to see if they're going to be moving into a good seating into the top four. Well, Blaze, um, I'm going to spoil it for you here. Um, they lost. They're 0-5, so even if they win these two, there's no way they're making the top four. I'm referencing Shadows of the Past, actually. Oh, well, I'm, oh, I'm talking Dream... Oh, okay, I was looking at Dream Destroyers. My bad. Well, same stands. Dream Destroyers 0-5. Shadows of the Past, that is a different story. They're three and two, so okay. You are right, sir. That's my my mistake. I'm so sorry, Blaze. Please forgive me. It's fine, man. But yeah, we're going to see these two games here, Dream Destroyers and then NOT. So uh, one match may be harder than the other, but nevertheless, both very important for them getting a good placement. Uh, right now, they're in a pretty good spot, all things considered, to most likely break into it. I think they just probably need to be uh, win one of their games to guarantee it, but... From there, seeding matters a lot. The fourth tier obviously facing the first tier, and the second and third going at it. So, yeah, we'll see. But for now, Dream Destroyers, uh, they're drafted through pretty quickly. So looking at this game in particular, let's see what we've got. Viper, Doom, Sand King, a lot of tanky heroes that are just darn difficult to kill. If you count out the fact that Sand King has multiple escapes, and you might not have detection at all times, that means that he is going to be slippery as well. So Shadows of the Past are going to have to work hard to secure some kills, but if they commit all their resources, they have some really powerful skills at hand. The Marana Arrow obviously has extremely high potential, but we've seen what heroes like Skywrath and Razor can do with some farm. Uh, yeah, most certainly. We have seen a lot of Razor and a lot of Skywrath and a lot of their power. Dream Destroyers looking with a fairly straightforward draft thus far. Faceless Void has been banned out, so both teams with some heroes that would synergize well with the Chrono won't be happening here. And, yeah, really nothing too crazy coming onto the board. It's really a shame that the Dream Destroyers have had um, such an unstable roster throughout this whole group stage. You can see on the overlay here, Bloody Nine, Enzo, Wild Witch Doctor, aka WWD, B-Kid, and Justin uh, are the official roster right now, and, well, we've got... Two out of the five still playing on the team. So it's always, always difficult when you're constantly sp uh, shuffling the roster around. They've put up some decent games, but as I mentioned before, still uh, yet to secure a win. Shadows of the Past do have a stand-in here as well. Um, he's tagged up as fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fun was fun with them last time. I'm not sure. Okay. Because uh, they had they were doing a little bit of shuffling at the beginning as well, if you recall. Yeah. So Their official roster on Star Ladder is not really that close to here oh, either. Narok and F4L are the two we'll recognize. But uh, who, do you know who who's their drafter? The guy with the... Is that... Yeah. Oh, that... that who the hell is he, that? He told me that his name was I-L-I-L I -L or whatever, but uh, I, I asked oh, FRL yeah. before the game, and it is Hi-Lua. So. Hi, okay, that's Hi-Lua. All right, he's on the official roster as well. So Hi-Lua or I-L-I-L-I-L. -I -L -I -L. Apparently he's an MJW fan, whatever that means. And Narok is also a fan of hot dogs. I'm glad, <laughs> glad, we, glad we've got <laughs> no, that. No, he's fan. sponsored by hot dogs. No, he's sponsored. Just not even a brand, you know, not Oscar Mayer, none of the others, just in, in general, hot dogs, you know. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's like being sponsored by, you know, fruit. Just, <laughs> I like I like I like fruit. Uh Ancient Apparition picked up by the Dream Destroyers, so um eh, an interesting choice. We saw it from the uh Navi US squad earlier today. It was not particularly successful, but still some options here with the Sand King. They can be a pretty potent roaming duo if you connect with the Bro Strike. Does make for pretty easy uh cold feet procs. So there's some uh, nice synergy potential there. Yeah, so high expectation for their general play is going to be just hoping that they can take advantage of their jungle. 
Um, Sand King can thrive in that environment, but AA is also pretty experience reliant. So I think there's going to have to be a lot of emphasis on independent pulling. We have seen some aggro try play from this kind of combo, but you're usually going to want a, a better support a carry hero than a Viper to go along with that to actually secure some kills. Because Sky is pretty quick on his feet. Marana, of course, has that leap. And uh, the Burrow Strike at the earlier levels is really hard to actually engage with. Shutters of the past, Five burning all that bonus main. time, and ooh, they settle on Furion. A little Dyer bit of the split pushing going to come out here for their off laner. So they've got a little flexibility with this final pick in that of the Marana. Could be a core, could be a support, but uh, they will have Razor and Nature's Prophet racking up the farm here to get things started. Final bans, what do you ban out if you're Dream Destroyers here? This is a rough draft to read. Um, that is true because the flexibility here specifically with the Marana, but I would say just a good hard dedicated stun. The Wraith King's already exactly. out, but we have seen heroes like Alchemist and even Sven hit the metagame pretty hard, so maybe just something with some good reliable disable. Um, Bane and Shadow Human are also on that list, so that's, uh, just because of the fact that Marana can be core and they could run the Razor mid, and then of course there's tons of roaming potential between heroes like Skyrath and Shadow Demon. So, I mean, there's a lot of ways to do it. If you're not really too afraid of the squishy heroes, you probably take out Ten uh, something more globally oriented, but I don't know, Shadow Demon is going to be a perfectly fine ban, and okay. uh, that's where they'll go. I, I, you know, we've talked about it a little bit, and I think you and I are both on the same page as uh, Shadow Demon enthusiasts, but... I'm still sad that he does not get much love these days. I, I think he is so sorely underpicked, and even though uh, he hasn't, like, God's put it uh, pretty pretty good when I had to cast him the other day, and that uh, the supports like Skyrat that have so much more zoning potential, uh, that can do a lot of solo work, or just all the rage these days, and that's not really where the Shadow Demon uh, shines, but we have seen a lot of these games where in tri lanes, having that defensive and offensive um, Kind of flexibility just uh, could be so potent Ten and would have been decent for Shadows remaining. of the Past. But uh, sad days, Blaze. Tears will be shed as we won't Five see Shadow Demon once remaining. again. Yeah, but I mean, like I said, he might not even fully fit into the lineup because if good Five Ice Blast Epicenters come Five out, then the Shadow remaining. Demon's dead in two seconds anyway. So uh, good defensive hero in general, but even if they Radiant don't get it, there's still going to be some other alternatives. You actually see the puck come through. So this is going to be the setup and the catalyst that really sets Dream Destroyers on the right track for getting massive AoE magical damage. The Dream Coil into Epicenter, into Ice Blast, you're going to be forcing BKBs out on heroes that are not prone for them. Yeah, there are not... Uh, I guess Razor is sort of a natural BKB carrier, not quite to the point of a, a Dragon Knight or someone that will really rush it as a core, but Ten certainly has no reservations mean. about grabbing some magic immunity. Marana on a, a similar track, Five not one of the items that remaining. she'd go for in a vacuum, but uh, can make a stop off nature's prophet and wow the ember spirit okay shadows of the Dying past they are ready for some fiery sword action and i guess that means it will be a support marana after all yep so we're going to be seeing the fury go to the off lane the marana and skyroth will be roaming supports i and Light will be taken most likely the mid as the razor and leaving the carry to be played uh, in the ember spirit uh, safe lane position so potential there we're going to see uh, also some role switching out from the side of dd we're going to have squee on the solo mid puck he was playing support last time but he, he told me that pretty much if he they find a hero that he feels he can uh, provide the most impact with like a tinker or in this case a puck and he's going to pick that one up for himself so we'll see fanny on the supportive role and uh, the stand-in as well so we'll see what can be made of them but i think their main intention here is to avoid confrontation until level six for the most part maybe control some runes contest that a little bit but in general just stay alive and try to wait out the first 10 minutes yeah, all frost fingers here. When are they going to have Ancient Apparition cosmetics, Blaze? Um, when they have, start having good Morphling ones? I really don't know. Oh, the, the hate on the Morphling cosmetics. Horrible, yeah, I don't know. Dude. Hey, hey, hey he, he looks pretty badass, I have to admit. I, I He's one of those heroes that... He just looks cool. His hands mm -hmm. are so big, though. I just don't understand <laughs> why his hands are so large. <laughs> You gotta scoop up the snowballs. A little bit. Are you, are you gonna be able to hurl a snowball across an entire map with little itty bitty baby fingers? I don't think so. He's got the big sledgehammers here, <laughs> catapulting them across the map. And I yeah. like that. Uh, no, I, I think you're you're right on the money. You're, you're right. How could you hurl those snowballs all the way across the map with with regular sized hands? That's uh, I, I never thought about it that way. But I think you're you're on the right track. Let's check out the Furion cosmetics though. And always tricked out. He's got the 
Scythe of Ice. I like this. Uh, hot Dog Man here. Look at him. He's Oh, mid-cast animation. This is good stuff. Screenshot worthy. Uh, the Scythe of Ice is, is pretty badass. And he, he's got the awesome antlers. Oh, they're inscribed, too. The inscribed Grand Crown of... What is Gigas? Gigas? G G um, Gigas? <laughs> it rings a bell, that? but uh, I don't know. Apparently, it's a beast. So, maybe it's Gigas. the horns taken from him. I don't know. Ah, okay. Like... Uh, like a hunter, I I see, a big game hunter. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. Well, that's good stuff. He's got the children of Verodisha. Which ones are those? Are those the little pine cones, or are those the? Uh, you you can kind of see it there. It's a little like I think it's quadruped even. It's like these little. They look really cool. They're they're. I'm not sure little if I've seen these actually. Profound dudes. They they roam about and I, they might move on two feet. But in either case, they're they're. They look very looks unique. almost like a mini shag bark kind of. Kind of, yeah. Like I, if a I shag really bark and a Christmas it. tree had a child. Something like that. There you go. Hmm. All right. Well, it looks like Viper will reconnect. Our uh, our famed hot dog sponsor recipient. Ready to make some treants here. I don't know. What do you think, Blaze? Do you like one of these drafts better than the other? Uh, In general, I think that... Shadows of the Past is going to be forcing them to really make things happen with their current draft. I like the Ember Spirit versus Ancient Apparition in general, but they if they're forced out of their comfort zone in the mid-game, then they don't have the best heroes to respond with. Ember Spirit's another hero that loves to forgo BKB for a very long time. So mm -hmm. in the end, you're going to be picking up BKBs on two or three heroes, and then you're still going to be going up against Viper Strike and Doom to disable you. So all in all, I would have to say that Dream Destroyer's draft is preferable to me, but that's assuming that they can play as defensive as they need to to prevent a steamroll. Because, as you mentioned, the standings are pretty clear. Shadows of the Past taking some nice wins, and DD still searching for their first. Yeah, and we, we've seen some pretty intense Ember Spirit games in terms of uh, how quickly he can ball out of control. And I don't know if we've seen I'll, 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 I'll play, uh, play the Ember Spirit, but definitely a hero that can get that snowball rolling and, and uh -huh. get Hylou out of control. was actually playing the Fury in the last two times. Like, he was actually the one that, if you remember, he was cliff jungling against EG just because that ah, game was so yeah, damn yeah. hard. But uh, all the same, he's going to switch it up a little bit. So roll reversals, Nayrock going to be running that uh, cool, those cool cosmetics on the Fury in, and we'll have to see if they're comfortable enough with that. Yeah. Oh, wow, the shots. Look at this. Look at this Skywrath here. Fire, he's brought out the bazooka. He's just slapping him around. Cheese, cheese and crackers. Squee? Yeah. Oh man, no puck cosmetics. How unfortunate. This is a this is this is Doom set is one of those uh, those older sets that it's like it looks really cool, but they're all commons. You know, you look at these items, and you think should that really be a common sword? I think it looks kind of cool. Huh. I think there's multiple factors going into it. If you look at it really closely, maybe it's lower resolution on the textures. Uh, uh -huh. Obviously, it won't have many particle effects attached to it. That kind of thing. Yeah, I mean that helmet though. Oh, I guess the helmet is technically rare, but it's got a little a little glimmer to it. I don't know why we're stuck in this long pause here, Blaze. I don't know what's going on here. Um, tactical. They're they're figuring out wards <laughs> yeah, in they're, advance. They're trying they're, to find all these ward placements, dude. Predictive and efficient. Some some sick stre looking, stream sniping here. Yeah, they're, they're looking at uh some Reddit threads from like a year ago of where is a good spot to place a ward against uh. The Ember Spirit Nature's Prophet Morana combo. I don't. I don't know. Blaze, if you if you could be any any Dota hero, which one would you be? If you, like, if you had to live real the life, hero. or if I'm trying to fight somebody, because um, Abaddon would be a pretty big choice for the Dota two fields. Well, let's well, say like you're you're in the game, but not really in the context of fighting as much as just like if there was a, a role play World of Warcraft version of Dota and you had to pick one of them. I mean, who would you just like to be? You know. That's a weird question. Um, flight sounds cool. Phoenix is pretty sweet. Rubik, fuck, fuck it. Rubik is awesome. The Grand Magus. That's you that's get a to good be everything. Choice. That's that's my go-to for sure. I like. I don't that. think there's anybody that can contest that. Yeah. After all this talk about frost fingers, I don't know. AA seems pretty badass. <laughs> I wouldn't mind sitting back, sniper rifle style, sniper rifle style, just chucking snowballs at people. Well, come Christmas time, you're just you're living the dream, dude. Oh, boy. All right, let's get into this game here. Oh, Jesus. Uh, we've got a resume, and we're ready to rock and roll. Dream Destroyers on the dire side, Shadows of the Past on the Radiant, and they will start off with a five-hero smoke. They'll invade, and oh, darn it. I was just getting getting the ball rolling. It's the door, the mouse, and the house on fire, but we're good to go. <sighs> got to walk my fish. Okay, oh, there we go. Here we go. Okay, 
in it to win it. So, Five Hero Smoke moving through the Dire Jungle. They've got some wards down, and looks like they just want to slow down this Sand King or Doom, or hell, maybe even both by putting a few wards down, blocking some camps. Uh, Mr. Fun will put down an Observer in this cheeky spot here. Gives you some nice vision, uh, not a huge amount, but a little bit over the cliff to see rotations towards the mid. And, of course, it does block this camp, which is the primary I've reason you put I've it down. Never Dude, I've never seen anybody walk here for the first seven hey, minutes of the game. Hey, come on. You might rotate the courier over there, and you can yeah, snipe Yeah, the courier it. for counter snipe, but, you know, when there's so many better ways to do that. All right, all right, fine. I'm just pointing out that it does more than block the camp. You get a little... A little peekaboo in there, you know. Maybe you dive the mid. He's trying to juke in the tree line, and lucky you, you've got this ward here. And okay. Well, if if that actually sees anything this game, uh, I owe you five bucks. But... Okay. Deal. Deal. Well, if this nightmare beacon scouts out anything useful, we'll 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 talk after the game and square up. They'll get down another one. This one's a sentry though, and they'll oh, block Squee this. Oh, Squee missed the block, and he <laughs> orbed in front of the creep wave to block it off. Uh oh. Value. <laughs> It's still a nice move to recover it. I mean, the block is pretty important. He's going to get it back on the top of the steps here. So All 150 right. mana, well spent. That's that's recovery. That's uh, that's good stuff. So we've got Puck versus Ember Spirit here in the mid lane. And uh, headed up top, it will be a safe lane Viper played by Buddy, Bloody Nine. He'll be up against the uh, off lane Narok Nature's Prophet. But down bottom is where the real action is going to break out. We'll see initiation onto Justin already. F4L actually could get turned around upon. Frostfingers is here. He's used uh, the ice, but uh-oh, he'll take an arrow. And now J4 gets clicked down. Is the chilling touch enough to secure the first blood? Sand King, he's got the extra damage, but can he get there to close the gap? He can. that's not a spot to run, man. That's You're running literally face first into a wall of trees and just banging oh. on them. If the, the elves will let you... Come think, in and make some cookies with I think, them. I think he was looking for this one over here, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a bummer. That'll be your first blood, and the Dream Destroyers, they come out victorious, and... Yeah, Ancient Apparition, kind of the, not, maybe not the master of the tri lane, but he's damn good in those scenarios. That Chilling Touch is only three attacks in the first point, but boy, does that damage add up. So it will be a try on try, kind of, the offlane Doom, and already the supports of Dream Destroyers will rotate out. So the Ember Spirit in the mid lane here is going to have a pretty decent time against the Puck early. Once Puck gets level six, there's a lot of kill potential against him, but you just generally don't see, oh, don't make me my wards, Courier. The courier brings sentry wards out to in December, but it's Ooh. not bringing a bottle and it's not going the weird path. Almost. Okay. We're this close, Blaze. Don't worry. That ward's still got plenty of lifetime left. Down bottom. Arrow flies through. Almost. But Justin will back it up and he'll be okay. So, even worse, that ward's not actually blocking the spawn. Are you that, serious? Those Wait, centaurs are serious? spawn. They're just stacking. <laughs> what? Perfect time in the jungle. Oh my, oh. dude. That, that, that spawn box must be something like this. Oh my gosh. That's I think awful. That you can place it like right over here, and it works. But apparently, they they <laughs> wanted that vision just a little bit too much, man. <laughs> too greedy, dude. Wow, I'm really surprised. I thought I thought for sure that would block it. Okay, well that's that's very unfortunate for Shadows of the Past. That's a that's a sad ward right there. Well, it looks like <laughs> looks like even if it gets a little bit of vision, that ward's utility is still not so great. Well, looking at the lanes, uh, mid fairly even. Ember Spirit is off to an okay start. A few last hits up on the puck. And uh, in the position ones, yeah, Razor and Viper farming pretty evenly. Offlaners, Doom's found a couple of CS already almost level 4. And uh, Nature's Prophet in a very similar position. So really an even start except for that first blood. We'll see Fun get initiated upon here. Burrow Strike connects. Chilling Touch comes out. A few more auto attacks will bring him down. 19 hit points Dunzo. to spare. The boots are there, and the Sand King <laughs> will grab the kill. 2-0. Dream Destroyers. Yeah, he had to start Arrow to try to disengage the first blood down on bottom. It ended up not being enough to save F4L, but yeah, with that, he's still sitting at level 2. Has no way to disengage from that situation, and he's running 300 MS versus that 350 from Sand King. So as hard as it generally is to get in range uh, for the Burrow Strike, going for the boots first build and being against so many heroes that are still... Uh, Bare feet it enables them to actually get some nice kills in the early game. Yeah, now Narok, he will be in a bit of trouble coming up here. And oh, look at these tree ants. Yeah, I don't know if I've seen these. They're cute. They're, they are like mini shag barks with Radiant's ugly faces. In December, connects with a burrow strike. Viper's here, two with points in that poison attack. Creeps will get in the way. And yeah, no. Narok, no way you're surviving that one. Down bottom, they dive Doom. Radiant's Justin will take, uh, 
bit of damage from the Skywrath, but at the end of the day, he will survive, and their dive will Dyer's not yield a kill. The three destroyer is off to a hell of a start here, Blaze. As I mentioned, the lanes are pretty Radiant's even. The big disparity of these kills, and now they've got a 1,500 gold lead. Yeah, it's actually adding up very quickly, and they're going to be able to farm up the jungle, as we mentioned, too. So the fact that Sand King is now level 3, has 2 points of Sandstorm, they're going to continue to enhance their lead. And yeah, I, like I said, they just need to play this uh, smart, uh, I thought passively, but in this case, uh, just making sure that their movements are always effective. The arrow will come through, but Tranquil Boots, Justin, stays on top of it, and now looks for a tower deny, though the damage will be sapped away. Yeah, damage, uh, yeah, not enough. Razor will grab the last hit, Puck coming around the backside, we'll find a kill on... Uh, the Skywrath Mage, now Justin, trying to do what he can. Zero. Base shift from Squee, not going to stop much. And that'll be another turnaround on the puck. Arrow flying through, off the money, but Justin playing with fire there. As Dream Destroyers get an okay trade, a one for one. I, or pardon me, uh, Shadows of the Past get a good trade. What I was trying to say is they finish off the tower and find a kill on the solo mid puck. Yeah, the... Doom was hitting for zero there, so not really contributing much. We do see in the mid lane there is going to be a temp, but it doesn't dispel the immolation. They're both burning each other, and there's the ultimate. The remnants come out, but Squee turning it around with his combo, looking for the orb on top. It's going to be enough. Yep. They will be able to bring down the Ember, and that's a very worthy trade. Yeah, great news for the Puck who gets the solo kill, all that experience, and uh, reaps the benefits of grabbing the last hit. So now Puck hits level 7 and really helps him get back on track uh, after taking that untimely death in the bottom lane. So two to five, Glenn's get the graph once more. Dream Destroyers losing a little bit of that momentum they had as that tower's falling. Narok up top, poison attacks, stacking up. He'll turn and start throwing some auto attacks as the Skywrath TP's in. Arcane Bolt, concussive shot, tower shots, adding up on the Viper. A few more auto attacks will bring him down, and it will be Narok who secures that kill. Shadows of the Past get another one up on the scoreboard, and they'll be pretty happy with that. Nature's Prophet finding pretty much exactly what he needs. And great news to see an offlaner get a kill like that. Justin contesting this pull camp. He'll hit level 6, which means Doom is online. And now he'll get Sen, which he might have the ulti, but is it enough to save him from this scenario? Arrow connects from pretty much point blank. Ion Eyelight is there and will bring him down. Doom comes out in December, whiffs the stun. It's only level 1, so very short range, but now he's on the run. And Narok will TP down. No tower, so he'll feel pretty safe about it. Sandstorm will buy him some time, but... Arrow is off cooldown, and now he will juke it. And that'll be the end of it. Ooh, meanwhile, in the mid, Puck taking a lot of damage, but has a haste rune, and that will ensure his survival. So, just making some fire bros in the mid lane here. They're going to be there to stay. Maybe he could use it to, if he needed to refuel, TP back and jump to them. But otherwise, they're pretty much not going to have any value, but a small bit of vision for this short duration. Yep. So, 4 to 5, things leveling out just a little bit here. Razor is taken over as the leading last hitter by about 10, a pretty big margin up on the Viper, and that means he will be rushing a mech. No recipe quite yet, but Buckler and Headdress already complete, and about 800 gold off the recipe. So, great news for him. Bloody Nine uh, following suit, and will do a very similar build, uh, but is at a much slower timing as Razor has picked up a couple of kills. Uh, in that tower, which will give Shadows of the Past a, a big edge in terms of these uh, kind of early mid-game skirmishes. Yeah, interesting switcheroo here. The J Justin's actually going to be the one to stack up the Eastern Camp in the Dire Jungle, but I'm not exactly sure who farms this because there is a Wild Wing in the pack. You could devour it and throw the tornado that way, but pinging it out for his buddy, I think they want to prioritize in December's Blink. Yeah, uh, Doom will be able to find some decent uh, recovery farm just being Doom, having the Devourer, and um, you know, grabbing, being able to grab some kills um, poss possibly in the fray here. Sand King is their big initiator, and they need him to hop in and start things off, and then they'll also need that Blink Dagger just so we can uh, drop the Epicenters. He's a big source of their damage for these early skirmishes that will be coming their way, and I think they're privy to it. Yeah, but the nice thing is since there's been so much movement across the map from the Sand King and the Ancient Apparition instead just gets to hang out on his own lane, this means that he is going to be finding a well-timed level 6. So sometimes you see AAs that get continuously push back and push back, dying and not really getting much out of their experience, but finding the ultimate at before the 10 minute mark is going to be huge for their general team play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you're definitely right about that with AA. He struggles in the early levels. He's great in a tri lane when you're forcing those fights and you can um, use that chilling touch to your heart's content. But when it kind of becomes a, a defunct laning phase, he's just so damn slow and very susceptible. 
So he is going for an Ice Vortex primary build here. I guess you could say fairly standard stuff. Uh, you'll see a lot of AAs just go for that value point and chilling touch unless you're really committed to a try line. Now he'll pull the easy camp and it is stacked up here. So he'll find himself a nice little bit of farm and that'll put him one step closer to level six. Mid lane, Puck, almost in trouble, but uh, no, Ember Spirit won't man up on him. Yeah, and right now they've got a very defensive position. They can respond to Ember by dooming him if he does try to go for some dive. And in general, they're just making this passive lane work out for them. So we are going to see some Treants trying to block off the spawns and might have done so for the nine minute spawn. But even still, they'll clear that out pretty easily. And we are still going to be seeing a pretty well-timed blink. That is unless the Sand King tries to go for any major clashes. Looking for the Ember right now who is silenced out. Yeah, and we'll be able to get off his Flame Guard and that'll help absorb some of the damage. Once the man up on the Whoa. puck, he'll do it. Connects with the Searing Chains. Down goes Squee. But Doom comes in with an ulti. Ember Spirit will fall unless he can get mecked up here. TP coming into the mid lane. No, nope, won't I'm happen. And deny. they will just be happy to secure this deny. And it will be necessary. Fun. Wait until the very last second there. But does get it nonetheless. And Razor just didn't have the mech in time to come save his buddy. How sad. Yeah, but we do see the Sprout come out. Blood Nine's caught in without any tree cutters at all, so taking a lot of damage here from the right clicks, and uh, it should be enough to bring him down. The last hit coming in, slow but effective. Viper will be falling. Yep, and now Shadows of the Past gaining a lot more momentum. Even though that Ember died, the deny, and then on top of just killing the Puck, slowing down that blink timing, uh, Puck did feel obligated to go for the power treads, which means... Oh uh, no, fun, what are you soon. doing? Fun. Will scout it out. Mystic Flare flies through. Fanny falls, and in December, it's a okay. wasted epi. Oh, in December, no. what are you doing? <laughs> what the? Like this should have been an easy burrow strike under tower. He takes three hits from the tower in that burrow strike duration, and he dies automatically. But Zed tries to go for an epi channel as if there was this huge convergence when it really was kind of a YOLO play from the Marana. Yeah, that was one of those kind of ironic situations where it's like, Marana, what are you doing? And then Sand King, what are you doing? And oh boy, that's just not not what anybody was looking for. So. Shadows of the Past will come out way ahead, though. They get a free kill there, and the Marana survives as she leaps to safety over the tree line. And Razor was inbound with a mech, so they could have even manned up a little bit more to try and keep that Marana safe if she did end up getting stunned. They still want to fight here, though. Fanny and in December grouped up around the tower, and I and I light looking for the opening, finds it in the trees. A lot of damage onto these two heroes with the plasma field. And in December, we'll be able to sandstorm in tower range, and he'll be okay. So we do see that the Ice Blast is up and available for Fanny. The Sand King's still going to be working towards his blink, though. It seems like he's just going to play another minute or so passively in the jungle. He's going to get the Tower Gold from mid, and then he's going to have one double stack, and that will put him to blink. But maybe this tower won't come so easily. A TP coming in the mid lane, and it is going to be fought over. A mech comes out from Bloody Nine. They're going to survive under their tower, but do they try to turn it? Yeah, for now, but here's your Viper Strike. Dream Coil only on one. Orb forward from the puck, which means Squee has no escape now, but Ancient Apparition has an Ice Blast, will fly it through, and Ember Spirit will be safe Dyer's from Shatter Range, but is, is repelled. Dyer's Meanwhile, in the top lane, Shadows of the Past converge on the tower. Narok with all those Treants make it an easy push, Radiant's and uh, in the mid, they will denied. deny this Tier 1, so just back-to-back -back victories for Shadows of the Past, and we glance at the graph. Uh, yeah, we see it reflected here. About a 1,000 gold and experience in their favor now as... Um, they just take a little more map control. So in this position, I mean, obviously the mech advantage is equal. Uh, right now, oh, Hylua might be able to pick off Squee. He has to get a jaunt as deep as possible, goes for the TP home, and they won't be able to interrupt it. So kind of has to go for the accidental yes. offensive Ooh. play, but... Arrow hits Fanny in the top lane from downtown. He'll get clicked down. Oh. And Onage is right, Mr. Announcer. <laughs> Fun secures another one. They've been looking really good in the past few minutes. Their level one play was a little shaky. Obviously, the Sand King got some good roams off, but now that he's been kind of distracted with his own jungle antics, uh, we've seen a huge rebound from Shadows of the Past, taking gold off the table and jumping up to over 1,500 in advantage. Not the biggest advantage, but they can start to snowball that with these heroes. We see the abilities flying out towards Justin. He's a little bit too big to handle right now. But uh, the big deal, the big question is how in December we'll use his second epicenter of the game. Blink Dagger available. The turtle potential is here, but we'll see if they can get the Dream Coil to set it up. Yep, here's your epi. Blink at the ready, as you mentioned. He'll burrow strike forward. 
And it will secure a kill on Narok, so a decent epi, but not that game-breaking, huge, cataclysmic ultimate, perhaps, that uh, the Dream Destroyers were hoping for. Shadows of the Past will continue to take a fight here, though. Eye and Eyelight presses forward, dealing a lot of damage with the uh, the Static Link. Mystic Flare comes through. Another stun from in December. Eye and Eyelight doesn't have enough da mana for the mech. Oh, no, that's not good. Now we'll see Al 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 take the Doom, and he will... Probably fall. War Stomp. Viper's there to click him down. Maybe they can get the deny. They go for it. Can't find the last hit. Marana will pay with her life to try to deny her comrade. And it's a four for nil. Dream Destroyers picking up a lot of momentum off that team fight, Blaze. Yeah, that's huge. Two Blink Daggers coming out for their side. So they're going to be able to pursue to no end and always set up that A ulti. That's going to be much more consequential than the last one we saw. So, yeah, it wasn't the best start, but it certainly was a better finish after they got the Razor. And that was the big deal. Um, I was going to talk about how it might be more uh, frequent for Dream Destroyers to get out of mech in the fight than the Razor based on the fact that Ice Blast does cancel out the healing effect. But in this uh, case here, it just came down to mana and the Razor didn't have enough. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think... Was, was there anybody? I, I think the Ice Blast... No, no, it didn't. Earlier, no, was, yeah, when he needed it, he, that, that would have been, been a good mech if uh, he had the mana for it. So he did have a couple of stick charges, but I don't think he got the chance to use them before he went down. So, uh, rough times for the Razor. He will pick up some of those core items he had back at home, though. He had a uh, Ring of Aquila waiting, and now moving towards the Drum of Endurance, and will pick up the Bracer. So he's a little bit tankier than he was uh, in that last skirmish. It will be a five-hero rotation. From Shadows of the Past towards the mid lane, and this tier one tower will start taking some damage, but in December comes flying in with the blink. Will connect wow. the stun. They bring down the Sky Wrath, Dream Coil on two, and the Razor will be the second to go down. We'll see the uh, Ember Spirit pressing forward, but it just doesn't matter. The Hot Dog Sponsor oh. will go down, and it's another four for nil. Rinse and repeat, it's soon to be a five for nil if they can grab the Marana, she'll leap. Yeah, they got it. Blink stun from in December coming in three seconds time. You don't miss this one without the leap, and there she goes. Wow, Dream Destroyers living up to their name here. And Shadows of the Past hoping to make it in the top four, as you mentioned, their last two games tonight, and they are not off to a good start. We had a pretty even game until it was a back-to-back -back series of team fights, and now 4,000 gold, 5,000 experience in favor of the Destroyers. That's just when they, they got their ultimates together. That's really when their timing hit, and we've been seeing it ever since, them controlling them out very effectively, not even needing the Doom for that one. But now down bottom, a TP to farm. That's the, the death of I Annihilate. Very unfortunate. Takes a Doom to the face, and they just continue on the mega streak. Squee has made a big recovery here. The Dyer's Courier will get picked off, and that is a little bounty going the way of uh, Shadows of the Past, so that's something, but no cargo on it, so not a, a game breaking courier kill. So, right now, I mean, like, if Squeeze this confident, just keep on farming and pushing, then they're actually have a really good read of the position of Shadows of the Past. Uh, as far as Dire Vision, they only see, like, one or two heroes, but he still, like, knows that they're not going to be able to rally to defend this, or uh, assumes that he has enough with the orb and the blink to get out of dodge if they do pressure him. So, he just gets some free damage on the tower, we'll leave it just outside the nigh range, and uh, that's going to be a very, very easy push once uh, the next fight settles. Uh, presumably in their favor as things have been going. But yeah, we did see some good picks from Shadows of the Past, and it looks like they'll need a few more to put themselves back in this game. Yeah, more than a few. This is a, a big swing of momentum, and now we'll start to see some core items pop up. We see three Blink Daggers on the Dire side, and Bloody Nine, he's had his mech, and he'll be working towards his Ag Scepter, tanking up with that point booster already in tow. And uh, they're just starting to come online, Justin with his drums, and... Working towards a BKB, Sand King on the high ground. He's got his Blink Dagger and Epicenter, but won't go for uh, the opening here. One thing that Shadows of the Past have a lot of is map vision right now. An arrow flies through, hits in December, but can they get in to actually finish off know. this kill? This could be a mistake. Okay, they're not going to go for it. Yeah, walking into that choke point there is just the perfect setup for what Dream Destroyer want to do. Squee was nearby, the Sand King's of course there, and Fanny with that Ice Blast. It could have been disastrous to pursue. But, like you said, they have a lot of offensive vision. They're trying to make something happen, so that's the way to do it. It's just look for those openings, make the decision based on the circumstances, and find the right pick. So, good sense there as Narok goes back to farming. He is looking for, uh, so he's on the single null tally. Okay, this is a little bit of a different take. We've seen <laughs> as few as none and as many as three. And the yep. one null tally actually is not so popular. Usually it's at least two. Uh, but he Let's will move go for in. Orchid, so. Yeah, we'll move into the Orchid. 
And I think it's a different level of progression there because if you look at the damage that you get from Oblivion Staff, like it's essentially the same idea of Null Talisman. Obviously, you don't get the HP, but you're still going to get that offensive right click that you build the Null Talisman for. So I'd rather get the Orchid sooner than fill up my inventory with items that you're just going to have to sell long term. I agree with you, brother. I totally agree. The triple Null Tally build I will never understand. It just doesn't seem so efficient, but what are you going to do? Narok? Yeah, I don't think he oh, realizes Rappi. how much trouble he's in. Epicenter gets channeled. He goes straight in. Ice Blast to boot. And it's a dead nature's profit. No chance of surviving that one. Yeah, so they're just kind of getting singled out. Right now they're trying to find locations to farm and regain lost momentum. But although they always have one person that is getting some good CS, they're, they're losing so many hero kills that it doesn't seem to matter. Now down bottom, they're going to get the combo of Doom as well as Dream Coil to lock down I Annihilate. And with that, they take more towers. They take Roche. They have lost complete control of the game. Yeah, this Razor is just falling apart. He has his core items up now, but... His farm is just starting to fall off. All of these deaths are really hurting him, and he's the big farmer for Shadows of the Past. So as they continue to slow him down, yep. that hurts uh, Shadows of the Past more so than pick-offs on, on other heroes. Mid lane, they'll kind of uh, distract them as an arrow comes out onto Viper, and the rest of the Dream Destroyers group up down bottom, and we'll start chipping away at uh, this Tier 2. Nature's Prophet will intercept the Creep Wave, trying to slow down the push, but they've still got plenty of creeps. There will be no backdoor Radiant's protection, and that will not be enough fallen. to keep the tower alive. A noble effort from Narok, but uh, at the very least does find himself some farm. Unfortunately, we'll have to spend a fair bit of it on a TP scroll to make it out as uh, he sees they're starting to converge on him. Yeah, if you're, they're not willing to engage on a Viper 3 versus 2 when he's been hit by a, uh, like a 3 or 4 second arrow, then I really don't see when they're going to find the openings. I mean, there are squishier heroes than Viper for sure, but when you have all those ultis on cooldown and you have visibly heroes pushing on the bottom lane, you got to take what you can get. And in this case, uh, maybe that would have been a poor decision. Maybe it would have been a good one, but you got to start taking risks because otherwise there's absolutely no chance you'll pull ahead by the time that DD hit critical mass. Yep, 10,000 gold, 10,000 experience. That critical mass moment is coming sooner rather than later. Bloody Nine now only 900 gold away from his Aghanim Scepter. Sand King has already picked up a force, a force staff as if he wasn't elusive enough. In December is 4, 1, and 11, by the way. He has had one hell of an impact this game, been involved in the vast majority of the Dream Destroyer kills. And even the Puck looks to be uh, headed towards a Yule Scepter, maybe just straight into Scythe, but I think Yule's is a little more reasonable here with that Void Stone. So we'll have to see. Uh, yeah, it is actually what you will okay. We won't have to see. It's Courier's got it covered. Right. So. Oh, BKB is already up on the Doom. That's a 10-second BKB charge ready for this next fight. Yeah. So I'm wondering how much of an impact that'll actually make, but so far he hasn't really been thwarted too much by that. Like the static link, I think, is the thing that's messed with them the most this game. But in general, you're still going to be able to get the blink Doom off before we've seen FRL's Ancient Seals take effect. So... We'll see the BKB, but I th honestly think that he should choose what fights to pop it in because you're not going to need it every fight. Just occasionally, when you get silenced a little early by the Orchid, by the Ancient Seal, something like that. So we'll oh, see. Epicenter, Epicenter coming out right on up. He blinks over the tree line and still does a fair bit of damage. Uh, F4L and I Annihilate, they get destroyed. It's a quick two for nil, and in December, continues his streak of huge participation in these team fights. 20 to 8. Dream Destroyer is just not giving up any of this momentum they've grabbed. And now it's upwards of a 12,000 golden experience edge here at the 22 minute mark. Some great plays coming out. Now they get to kind of death ball here onto the tier 2 tower. And although they don't have really a push oriented lineup, they can still just keep Bloody Nine on the front line here. And there's nothing that Shaz's Pass are willing to do about him. Maybe on top they can look at Justin. They will hit the arrow. Very nice arrow. And uh, as tanky as it may be, he's still going to be dropping very quickly. Oh, he does use the BKB and will try to make it out. Pops the Doom, War or Hoof Stomp, and he has that Blink Dagger. He lives! Wow. He lives! Oh, no. And now in the mid lane, they'll press right into the Tier 3. There's still a Glyph standing, but Shadows of the Past will take oh, this no. exchange all day. F4L, he gets caught. He will shatter, and he even takes a Piper Strike for that. Yeah, you hate to see a support just drop that quickly, but he overstepped his bounds, and ah, DD called the bluff. They're like, okay, they're not getting back fast enough. The Nature Prophet just teleported out offensively. Let's go. Let's pick up one more, and then we can fall back and do something simple like I Roshan. I can't believe he lived. Yeah, he even dodged Narok's TP. Like, he had such good game sense in his movement there. Obviously, uh, the Doom was unnecessary if he just went for the War Stomp BKB away, but... Uh, 
you never know. So just go again, responding to that situation with this raw HP. Oh no, Skype, have mercy. No. Oh he man, Blaze, I'm so sorry my friend. Hold on y'all. Skype lady might be talking to us. We're having some issues here. He's still in game and uh, sorry Dota TV fans, but let's take Gander. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Come on Skype, I know you can do it. No, don't update. Are you kidding me, Skype? Well, in the mid lane, we'll see Narok get hit by a solo epi. And yeah, no way you're surviving that one. Create some space for his team to uh, finish off Roche. Like, what, what, what the shit, Skype? You just do a ninja update on me? Mm, hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. I'm trying my hardest. Blaze! There we go. Breaker, breaker. My Skype crashed and then it updated. I don't know why, but. <laughs> nice. Sorry about that. I blame Microsoft. Yep. Yeah. But I, I did catch that epicenter, I? though. That was pretty cool. Narok just got juiced. Yeah, it's it's good. I mean, when he has solo kill potential on literally every hero on the map, it's extremely problematic. He's got BOTs, they... dude. Yeah. What? Blink, Force, Bottle, and BOTs. 25 minutes on this same king. He is rich. All goes back to that ward that didn't block the camp, man. That Says didn't help. Best. That definitely did not help. Um, oh. I God. Yeah, note to self. Don't ward there. <laughs> yeah, they're looking back at their past, seeing the shadow that haunts them, and just saying, why? Why did we give the SK free farm? But no. <laughs> There's so much wrong with this game that it's difficult to put, point it down to Radiant one thing. Uh, Shows of the past, they had a, a draft that was risky, had its limitations in the fact that they were all glass cannons, and they had to make everything work in the early game to really find things. The, the Skywrath Marana Rome, I think, was one of the bigger make-or-break aspects of it, and the fact that they didn't really get much kill momentum there, as well as the fact that uh, there were just so many turnarounds from DD. They kind of baited them into a, a situation where they extended pretty far, and with some burst nuke, with some silence, uh, they send them packing. So... It's just kind of one of those circumstances where if you don't have the durability to back it up, you better be very precise in your movements, and a single error forced out and Radiant's unfortunately cost them time attack. and time again. Yep. Squee is very close to a Scythe of Ice now. He has that ultimate orb of 2,700 gold, so essentially a Void Stone away to the Hex. And that's always a big item pickup on the puck. And DD just slow sieging this top tier two. And, uh, well, Shadows of the Past looking for the right opening to contest. They keep chucking arrows in, but eh, no opening. And Puck will get the last hit on the tower. That's the end of the Outer Towers, baby. Now Shadows of the Past just have to defend the base. Yeah, not much more ground to hold. Uh, they're going for a little bit of split push play while they still have the opportunity. But that's not even going to net Ember Spirit his Battle Fury just yet. He's still a little bit off of that. And at 26 and a half minutes, if you're just looking for that next big item... You might come up wanting. We'll see. At least the Orchid comes out for the Nature's Prophet, and we'll hope that he can accomplish a little bit more with that than we have seen from the Ancient Seal so far, because uh, in this position, like, you have to get the silences out on the Puck, who unfortunately just can Yules it, and then the Doom, who can just BKB it. So I think, yeah, this Hex is might be the straw that breaks the camel's back. If they can't prevent uh, the enemy from casting, because two of them have ways to remove it already, uh, the Viper is not a good target, um, unfortunately, and now they have this big item, the big initiation tool that is guaranteeing the fight even more than a blink stun. Yep. Razor close to a BKB, just halfway to the recipe, but he'll get caught by the Ice Blast. Dream Coil pucks there with the damage, and I think he's at risk of shattering here. He'll be pretty close. Yep, down she goes. Fanny gets that one. And that's just an easy pick on the Razor. Mm -hmm. They can't even punish Squee for it. That's insane. He actually blinks Hexes in. This might be a little bit much, but uh, still has that Yules and still has the confidence behind Whoa. it. Oh. oh, what a bait. Well, it's just a Sky Wrath, but still great bait, as you mentioned. And now Puck will hop forward once more. And they'll have to retreat to the base. Al Al, he's going to TP out, and he's kind of close to a Battle Fury. There you go. That's uh, actually kind of big, but mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it's big enough. He still just drops so quickly. One hex, he's gone. And uh, he won't obviously have buyback plus Battle Fury. So it's a difficult position to hold, even though at this point, with Cleave, he would be in a defensive posture. One Doom, one hex, and that's all she wrote. Yep. And even so, he still won't have it out quite yet. Arrow flies through, hits a creep. Close call. 
but they will walk back uh, a little worse for wear, but now DD, they might be able to just split push here a little bit. Puck needs to be careful, very low on hit points. He gets mech up as Bloody Nine comes in. Justin is the Aegis carrier, so don't forget Doom does have a second life and he'll be eager to be in the front lines. Arrow flying through, long range, will get juked. And meanwhile in the top, this is going to be one of these scenarios where the Dream Destroyers have a huge lead, about 22-ish thousand gold experience, but breaking the high ground without uh, a kill on the board is just very difficult. They pretty much have to find some sort of a pickoff mm -hmm. and then break the high ground that way. Definitely, and the Aegis only has one minute left on it. So Shadows of the Past aren't out of this game yet. It's not over until the Ancient Falls, and right now they have a lot of great comeback tools, but the problem is map control. They can't break out of their base. They're up against a nearly unkillable Puck who has a gem. So he's going to continue to de-ward against them. He's going to continue to make it impossible for them to see the enemy coming. And with that, that means the Ember just can't leave the base. If the Ember leaves the base, he gets blink hexed, he gets silenced out, he dies. And with the death is the end of one of their lands of racks. Yep. So, DD will just sit back, continue farming. Sand King now with 2,100 gold. Still hasn't grabbed uh, too much past the BOT, sitting on an ultimate orb, but maybe he's looking for a scythe of his own. I think that makes the most sense, right? I guess he could be looking at a Lincoln's, though. I don't see why he'd want that over a Hex. Yeah, we'll have to see. Um... I wouldn't see anything other than a Sheepstick being that valuable right now. I mean, again, we're talking about the Ember Spirit here and the fact that he's not going to have a BKB for a very long time, if at all. So this is probably the best way to just kind of drop the hammer, finish this off with the last nail in the coffin. But for now, they're holding it. They're actually going to go and try to f call a bluff, force an issue, but Ooh. we see three heroes still in a defensive posture, able to keep each other's backs, and they're just farming out free creeps in the meantime. Yep. Just slowly tightening the noose, and I mean, there's just, there's not much Shadows of the Past can do. Yeah, they can turtle up and they can clear out the waves to get shoved into their base, but this continues on. The Dream Destroyers are just going to keep furthering their lead, as we see on the graph, because they have complete control of the map. They can clear out the Radiant Jungle, they can move into the Dire Jungle and finish it off. We see Narok trying to do that right now, looking for anywhere to get farmed, so desperate to get towards this BKB, and he needs to be a little careful. They might take those hot dogs and... Put them where the sun don't shine. Oh, boy. This is just like, I mean, when you're going for BKBs at this stage in the game, like, you're not going to get it finished in time unless TD, like, they literally have the game dragged out against them for another 10 yeah. minutes. They might wait for the next Roche, and that's pretty much their timer. But if there's a quick hex, they'll just, why wait? We'll they see Narok here trying to TP. Dream oh! Coil. Oh, Narok. He'll get punished. Hot Dog Man gets turned into a piggy. How the tables have turned. And he'll just get completely punished. So the one hero out there finding a little bit of farm. Not even happening. They're just completely neutering the power of uh, Shadows of the Past at just every single turn. Yeah, the, the 35 seconds is enough time for them to just kind of go ahead with the cleave play and continue to, to push out the ways until he respawns. But it's just these little pickoffs are going to keep happening because the Sheepsticks are coming through on Blink. Dagger hero. So, another initiation. Yule Scepter. There is going to be the leap away, but still the Hex comes forth, and in December is here to follow it up. Yep. Uh, Mystic Flare comes through. They will be able to bring down the gem, or bring down Puck. Gem on the ground. Fanny comes in and picks it up. Meanwhile, the rest of Shadows of the Past starting to take a lot of damage. Only Razor, as well as the Ember Spirit, still alive, but in December is there with an Epicenter. Doesn't do too much. BKB on the Razor does keep him alive, but after that, what does he have? And the answer is essentially nothing. Bloody Nine with a triple kill. They may let the Ember Spirit live, as he does have a couple of Fire Remnants to hop to. He'll make it back to the Tier 4s, but now this mid lane of Rax, fair game. And the tower Radiant's goes down. They've got the glyph standing. Buybacks uh, are actually available here. Radiant's Razor doesn't have one, and he's the big one that really needs Bayrock it. Bayrock did pick oh, off the Ancient Apparition, stole the Geometry side, was able to get out. But oh. Justin, linked to the trees, was looking for the Hoof Stomp, but he was too, like, it wasn't, there was no way to get that stomp. But he tried to blink early because he hoped that he would be able to get just barely close enough. Yeah, meanwhile, Bloody Nine just laying into the mid lane of Rax here. Narok coming in. They will connect with the Mystic Flare, and this Viper is taking heavy damage. He has a mech, but he can't use it. Whoa. He's tanky, but not invulnerable. And they'll bring him down. Now they'll punish the Doom. Justin will get initiated on as well, but Hoof Stomp looking for the blink out, but can't find it, and will get punished. So Shadows of the Past, they make a hold, and they don't have to burn any buybacks. Ember Spirit secures that kill, and... 
Well, is this is this the turn? Is this the road to recovery here, Blaze? If there is a turn at all, this is certainly it. Right there, holding it without losing a single Rax, as we mentioned, without a buyback as well. There is some real potential here. Hex is on two heroes, though. Squee and in December still have tons of kill potential. And in fact, the epicenter is cooling down with a regen rune active. Squee might be the bait that allows Sand King to just completely destroy them. Yeah, uh, Gwyff comes out, buying some more time. In comes Sand King with the Epi on two. Turns him into a pig, and that'll be easy kills on the Nature's Prophet and the Ember Spirit. Tower still dies to the Wrath of Razor. He'll pop his BKB. Bloody Nine buys back, and it looks like the Dream Destroyers have had enough, and they want to end this game sooner rather than later. The Tanky Razor doing a decent bit of damage before he goes down, but that's all it'll be. Just some damage. Doesn't secure a counter kill, and it ends up as a three for nil exchange as the Dream Destroyers make it happen once more. In December, man, the stand-in status looking pretty good. He has gotten 7, 1, and 20 as his KDA. That's 27 of the 31 kills he has contributed directly and uh, has moved towards this massive amount of farm. As you mentioned, it's not just BOTs. It's not just 4 staff. It's the Hex and the Blink. It's all together. He does Blink into an arrow, but point Blink, that's a quick stun. He throws up the Hex, wastes that CD, but they'll chase him back to the fountain with that Ice Blast. Yeah, big Ice Blast flies through and does connect on just the uh, Skywrath Mage. But now the Barracks. Fair game. Glyph is still available here. Razor will be coming up pretty soon. There's your Glyph. And, okay. Looks like we'll have a DC on the Skywrath and get a moment here to collect our thoughts, Blaze. But starting to feel like uh, Fat Lady singing. Yeah, the, the Sheep Sticks are just so damn good against this entire lineup. And there's, there's no answer at the moment. There will be soon. But right now, we've only seen BKB from the Razor. He's used it twice, and oh, the only way he was able to actually use it to survive through a fight was by TPing home. And it was on cooldown the last time. They they tried for their aggression. They tried for the big play to, to follow up death with more advantages. But in the end, the Sand King gets his ulti back off a of cooldown and just sends them right back where they were. Into the depths of the grave. Now, G, they're ready to go, but with only the four heroes to try to save this melee rax. Arrow coming in, might hit the Radiance Viper. Middle nope, just barely able to sidestep fallen. it. They'll finish off the melee barracks uh, before mounting their retreat. But still, the damage has been done and that is just one step closer to the Dream Destroyers taking the win. Roche has respawned and uh, with all of their map control, I see no reason why they can't just take it out. And yep, there you go, Doom blinks right on in and they should be able to get another Aegis for free. Smoke play up top might net a kill on the Sand King here. He is obviously, he just BOT'd the lane. He is pretty well committed to this push, and he probably will just blink ahead of his creep wave to the next one. Well, no, he'll, we'll see him farm up the jungle. He is playing it just a little bit closer. They're waiting for him, but they realize he's not with the pack. So they'll keep hunting, but in the meantime, Roche is dropping. And with that medallion picked up on Ancient Apparition, they're going to be able to bring it down at a pretty good time. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, with this rotation from Shadows of the Past, even if they start moving towards the Roche Pit now, I don't think they'll make it in time. You know, it seemed like Sand King would have just uh, pressed forward unaware, but all of the heroes missing on the map with the Creep Waves pushing in, it is somewhat suspect that they're smoked mm -hmm. up, and good game sense from in December not to get hyper-aggressive there. Aegis of the Immortal goes to the Doombringer once more, and, uh, well, he's got 3,700 gold to boot. Now DD will just head towards the bottom lane, and I guess they'll head straight for the base. They know that there's no glyph available, so this does make their pushing efforts a little bit easier. So this is this is the make or break point. They have one battle fear on the Ember Spirit. He is level 17. Deals a lot of damage in the cleaving sense, and uh, obviously if they group up too, too much on these waves, they are just going to be destroyed. But to get inside a fist range, he has to be in hex range, and that might just mean the counterplay comes after DD. Yep, arrow comes whizzing through and does not connect. They'll TP back. But already, this tier 3 tower is taking a lot of damage before they get in position to contest. Or, or concussive shot out onto the bloody 9. Ember Spirit looking for the opening, using the cleave. Does an okay amount of damage, but Doom's just so tanky. Still a hard attack up on Viper. Nearly 3,000 hit points and an Ags. We'll start out with a Viper Strike onto the Razor. Dream Coil on 2 off to the side. Sand King will just hop in and finish off the Skywrath Mage. Still has the Epicenter available as the Tier 3 Tower falls. Buyback from the Skywrath, and I think DD will just be looking for kind of a fake back here. Arrow comes in, will miss, and given that they still have the Epicenter, there's a big window where they can just take this huge team fight. Maybe in December we'll do something a little bit more sneaky, hide in the tree line, but nope, won't be able to find that opening. Still the Cleave, doing some damage. Viper Strike once more comes out, this time on the Ember Spirit. That will slow him down. 
And I so. like this from DD. Just a nice slow siege. Slow and steady, Blaze. Yeah, back to production. It has been broken so from the mid lane, at least. So they're going to be able to start chipping away. But it's going to be in December. That has to make the big engage. Yep. And there it is. Epi channeling from the low ground. He'll be able to blink over, and it's off the mark. No damage from the Epi. Gets a little tiny bit on the Narok in the Tier 4s. He does zone them out very effectively, though. So maybe, just maybe, they can get this ranged barracks going for the sure damage. I like it. Not rolling the dice. They'll go for what they know. And now DD will take a more defensive position. And with that, they will back out mid. The range rack's taking a lot of damage from the creeps that are shoving in as well. And they'll be pretty happy with this little siege they have going on here. Now they move in for the melee barracks. Bloody Nine in the front lines. He does now have the value point. Talisman of Evasion. 25% Evasion really ups his EHP. And of course, they don't have any true strike coming out. But oh. in comes Doom. In comes in December as well. BKB popped by Doom. War Stomp. He goes right in onto the Ember. Skywrath falls. It'll be a dieback on him. Uh, Sand King gets killed, but he'll buy back, and he has BOT, so we can get right back into the fray. Ember Spirit does buy back, and still a 5v4 on the field. Ooh, Squee needs to be a little careful. And I think DD, I don't know that they really need to press the issue here. They still have the Aegis up on Doom, so maybe they are still in a good position. Three minutes remaining. They could actually just hang around until the epicenter cools down. Only about 25 seconds left. Oh, that should be a hex right there. Or just a bro strike's going to connect. Either way, fun's going down. And yeah, the Ember just can't do enough right now. They have the Aegis. They have the Heart, which means essentially full lives on everyone that it wants to be on the front line in the first place. So they go ahead and uh, we see the final engage. They have to hold this lane. Yep, they'll commit to it now. Justin in the front lines. He's the one taking the damage, but still the Aegis carrier. Shivas comes out, and they will bring him down, but they've already lost the Razor. Now he'll buy back straight away. Ember Spirit scoots back to the well. I Annihilate making the final stand. Glyph is about to cool down in a few seconds, but not soon enough. And the bottom lane of Barracks will go down, and they'll have enough. GG, well played. The Dream Destroyers won't even have to reinitiate and save it for another day. Shadows of the Past concede, and what a game. The Dream Destroyers living up to their name and glancing at the bets. I think this was a pretty big upset here, Blaze. A huge upset. 77% for Shadows of the Past, 23 for the Dream Destroyers. Rares were lost on this one. Brutal, man. I mean, Shadows of the Past, they definitely tried their best, but there were vulnerabilities in the draft in terms of just surviving through the onslaught, and the mid-game was all in favor of Dream Destroyers once they got those ulties together. And so, yeah, we see some great play from the stand-in in December, really helping to boost his team there, but as a whole, Dream Destroyers, they definitely looked a lot more stable than they have in games past. So, very well played to them, but unfortunately for Shadows in the past, it means that going into this next game, they are tiptoeing that line between the guaranteed in in the top four and perhaps being knocked out just shy of the finish line. Yep, absolutely. So, should be a short break here, guys. It was a lengthy game, and we'll get into our last match of the night, Shadows of the Past, going up against Not Today. I'm Zayori, joined by Blaze, and stick around because more Dota 2 coming your way for Star Ladder America Season 10 Day 5 coverage.